This week, Omega and the rest of Clone Force 99 are back. We sit down with Andor's composer, Nicholas Bertel, and more. It's December, which means it's time for one of my favorite cold weather activities. Snowball fight. Let's go. This is in Pennsylvania. Forgot I live in California now. Let's get to the news. We are less than a month away from the season premiere of Star Wars The Bad Batch, and this week we got a new extended trailer for season two. Yes, this version has even more Gunji, and Sid is back to order around the batch featuring a more grown-up Omega, plus Wrecker, Tech, Echo, and of course, Hunter. Wanda Sykes has joined the cast as a new character called Fee Genoa. Crosshair is still kicking around, even though he refused to help his brothers last season, still not over it. And of course, Emperor Palpatine continues to spread fear across the galaxy, while Rex returns asking for a favor. Any chance I could use you for a mission? Oh, we are all in, Captain. As for the key art, Omega is front and center with a fetching new helmet, and she has her energy bow ready to defend her newfound family and freedom of the galaxy at large. She stands alongside the core of Clone Force 99, Hunter, Tech, Echo, and Wrecker. The two-episode premiere debuts on January 4th, 2023, only on Disney+. For a closer look at that key art and to rewatch the trailer, aim your energy bows to StarWars.com slash ThisWeekNow. Phase two of Star Wars The High Republic is in full swing, and that means new short stories in Star Wars Insider. In issue 215 on sale this week, author George Mann offers an alternate look at the Jedi in a different perspective with an excerpt from the short story on StarWars.com slash ThisWeekNow. And if that's not enough High Republic fiction for you, This Week also brought us Starlight Stories, a new hardbound collection of the Phase 1 fiction first published in Star Wars Insider beginning last year. Take a peek at Part 1, First Duty by Kevin Scott with another excerpt available only on StarWars.com slash ThisWeekNow. Pack a travel snacky snack. The Clan of Two is returning early next year. Last week, The Mandalorian creator John Favreau, executive producer Dave Filoni, and star slash best dad in the galaxy Pedro Pascal gathered at Comic-Con Experience in Brazil for an exciting announcement. The third season of The Mandalorian will arrive March 1st, 2023, only on Disney+. To celebrate, Lucasfilm released a new still from the series featuring Din Djarin and Grogu reunited and off on some new adventure. Read all about it and rewatch the previously released teaser trailer over on StarWars.com slash ThisWeekNow. Part of the emotional core of Star Wars has always been the soundtrack, and our most recent live-action series, Andor, now streaming on Disney+, Plus, is certainly no exception. Recently, we sat down with Andor composer Nicholas Bertel to talk about beginning at the end with Marva's funeral procession. There's been such a reception from the fans for the music in this. So how did you come up with compositions that yeah. set themselves apart for a spy thriller? From the very start of our conversations, everyone was really supportive of this idea of exploring a new musical landscape for this story, for this part of the universe. There was a moment of saying to myself, you know, how do you start? Like, where do you even start? Yeah. And interestingly, because of the extent of the on-camera music, the first thing that I did was I worked on the funeral. And that's actually how we started, because that was going to be such an extensive sequence where we were going to have all these on-camera actors and musicians performing this sequence, you know, the whole funeral procession leading up to the final Marva's speech. That was the very starting point for that piece. But then, as the first thing that I played for Tony in a way, that sort of gave us a way in to saying, oh, interesting, Tony, that, that feels good. Yeah. What else might feel good? Or how might we approach this? Yeah, no, and that was a perfect segue because I definitely want to talk about that diegetic music because yes. it's so fascinating. There's so much of it, yeah. There's so much, so of, much it. of it. So yeah. you also had a hand in the anvil, you know, becomes oh, yeah. such an important part of Absolutely. how yes. Ferrix tells time and yes. also warns people and brings people together oh in their community. God. Just a really fascinating focal Absolutely. point for that community. Tell us about how you worked that anvil sound, yes. which you know, normally we think of as Foley, into... Yeah, no, it's a piece of music. It's, yeah. it's all musical and every single anvil, there was this thinking about, you know, what is the sound of that, which I believe, you know, Tony Tony's is Beskar steel. That's the material, you know. It's very Star Wars. Very, that's the material. <laughs> we like this idea that music, even inside of the construction elements, the builder elements of the culture, the music kind of guides through the day as just sort of like I said, there's a signal, you know, that there's a musical signal that that they respond to. Oh, and so what's interesting is then when you see an episode three, I call it the signaling. 
the alarm signaling essentially. That is actually a whole percussion piece that I wrote. There's a particular set of rhythms that Tony and I kind of coded for ourselves. So we worked on that for a very long time and the, even the sounds, what is that metallic sound? And we did a lot of work with real different metals, even including going into Tony's basement of his house and actually clanging on various things. Like we went, we, it's, <laughs> it's intergalactic, that. but there were also like, we, I, I wanted to get real different kinds of things. So we would take that and I would bend these sounds. And there yeah. was, it was very, there was a whole range of experimentation. Did Tony Gilroy's house pipes make it into the final? There's a variety of those in Ooh. different places. I always tried to weave a little bit of Tony's, you know, uh, concepts into that. So That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. So another really interesting thing that I thought set the tone so well for Andor was every single episode had yes. a slight variation on the yes. theme. Yeah, so that was an interesting idea. Obviously, the idea of a main title theme for anything in Star Wars is a very weighty question, I would say. And it was an interesting idea of like, is there a Cassian theme? Is there really more of just an Andor theme, actually? And for me, just I would say almost philosophically on a musical level, I always think of themes as being about relationships, dynamic relationships between things. So I like the idea of themes as being connections, you know? That first theme, I wanted it to connect a lot of persistence. There's a sort of yearning for something. There's also sort of a sense, I think, over the whole series, there's a sense of discovery. As you go through the episodes, you're learning so much more. The show really evolves tremendously. I wanted it to be something that felt like a beginning of something. We're almost learning about the yeah. theme as it grows, and then it sort of climaxes, it crescendos, and then it's out, you know? Yeah. So each episode, that's the shape of the theme, but from the beginning, you know, to the second episode, third episode, each already starts to change. Mm -hmm. There's elements, perhaps, of different planets. Sometimes you might have elements of Canari, sometimes you might have sounds of Morlana, Narkina 5, you know, the prison. I think two of our favorites are episode 10 is a very sort of an orchestral dirge in a way. Mm. And then episode 12, the opening title, is performed by the Ferrex band yeah. that actually plays in the future. You know, so you hear the band playing the main theme. Yeah. So it's, that's how we did that. So it's literally like sort yeah. of a cool mixture of the worlds colliding. And also, you know, shout out to the whole production crew because seeing what they put together and including like the VFX shots and the way everything was built and how it looks. I mean, I think people are going to be really, I was so excited to see it. It just looks gorgeous. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, it really does. It looks yeah. gorgeous. It sounds gorgeous. Well, <laughs> I'm so excited for the world to discover this. Thank and you. thank you so much for stopping by, Nicholas. Thank you. So great to talk to you. So great to talk to you. Thanks, Nicholas. All three soundtrack albums for season one of Andor are available now, including every Niamos mix we could hope for. That's it for this week, but for more on these stories and other news from around the galaxy, check out StarWars.com. And be sure to join us right here for This Week in Star Wars every Thursday. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.